How's it going guys? Anxious Cynic back again with another Mindimator tutorial in our series of tutorials from the Interpearl Quirl. I almost couldn't get the, the right words out there. Anyway, so today we're going to be focused on this effect. The Enchanted Golden Apple. So, let's go ahead and get back to our scene. And uh, the thing I want to first point out is this is not, obviously as you may have been able to tell a like 100% realistic enchantment look. It just kind of simulates it uh, in the easiest, most basic way you can do in Mindimator. So I'm going to show you this method and maybe sometime later on down the road we'll figure out a more advanced way of doing it. Anyway, first thing we're going to do is spawn in a dang old item. We're just going to go with an apple, just like we did in the animation. All right, so here we go. We got our apple. Let's go ahead and bring it up so we can work with it a little better. And what you want to do, first thing I'm going to do is change the rotation point. Now, the reason for this is we're actually going to duplicate the apple and then have a bigger one over it that's going to be the uh, enchanted texture. So it makes it much easier if you make the rotation point at the center for our scaling. And I'll show you why. So first thing we're going to do is zero out our texture here. It looks like maybe, maybe about six or seven uh, will do it for us. And that doesn't look too bad. All right, what we're gonna do is duplicate this item and then we're going to take our duplicate and parent it to the original. And then we're gonna zero out its position so that it's completely in line with the original. Uh, what we do want to do as well though is bump up the render depth to one or two or whatever number you need. One will probably work fine for this. And what you're going to do is up the scale by let's just say 1.04. It's not too bad. It's a little, maybe a little bit too big, but uh, we'll, we'll determine that in a moment. All right, so now that we've got that scaled, what we want to do is change the color of our duplicated, duplicated, whatever word you want to use, uh, item. So uh, basically the the color scheme that I came up with was somewhere around in the uh, these colors, the magentas and the blues and whatnot. So let's just go ahead. I'll try it every five frames. We're going to go from that color to, let's say, this color and maybe a slight purplish blue something like that and uh, we'll just go with that for now and see what that gives us okay so now that we've got our color set up what i actually should have done in the beginning was you want to you want to go ahead and up the mix percentage we're gonna say what if we do it all the way so there's two different ways you could do this you can leave the alpha up and then just bring the mix percentage up just a tad or you can take the mix percentage and, and max it out and then use the alpha to uh to get it where you want it to be so let's just we're going to go with that method just so we get a nice even color over the entire appleage and uh i actually want to tweak our scaling a little bit here because you see how going through this because of the stem so what we might want to do let's see if we can correct this a bit by bringing the the z down just a tad let's zero it back out and let's have that go 1.02 or one something like that maybe let's make sure down here looks a little better it's still off right there because of this uh, but this is just an example for the apple so don't pay too much attention to that uh, you could possibly correct it a little bit better uh, with some extra TLC but for now we're just gonna go with that so one thing you may notice here now this isn't really a big issue but our texture like the stem is really causing us all the problems that we're having right now um, but this texture here on the stem is kind of not working out the way it should, the way I want it to. As you can see, everything else seems to be pretty uh, on point, but this one not so much. And scaling it doesn't seem to have much of an effect. So what you can do is just slightly move this one over. Let's just say, let's give a negative 0 0.02, point zero something like that. 
And then that way we don't have that little nasty conflict going on there too much. We do have it here, but again, this is kind of an odd shape and we're gonna try to see if we can make this work. All right, so that's good enough for this example. So what we've got here is each of these keyframes is gonna linearly transition to the next color. If you watch the color mix down here, if you guys can see that, it changes color over time and that's what you want. It's just gonna continue changing. So what we can do is take this, these keyframes and control C copy and then paste and then paste and you know, for as long as you need it to go, you just keep pasting these and you know, depending on how your animation is working, five frames may not be fast enough or maybe too fast, whatever you need to do, but then you end up with this. And of course, these are just the colors that I'm using in this example. Um, I couldn't find anything that gave me an example of what the actual enchant colors are. And I don't think these are the exact colors I used in the Ender Pearl Quarrel, by the way. But um, you can make these whatever you want. If you want to do something completely original and not actually mimic Minecraft, then give that a whirl and see how it works out for you. Um, but these are just like me trying to kind of mimic the colors you see in Minecraft when an item is enchanted. And of course, you know, if it's too too much, like if this is too visible, you can just select all your keyframes. One easy way to do that is this button here on your timeline item, select all keyframes, and then go to your alpha and adjust it. You can bring it down to make it a little bit um, less noticeable or almost not noticeable at all there, or bring it way up and make it extremely noticeable. I kind of found in my experience that about 45, is a pretty good number. It kind of gives you the original texture with that slightly highlighted look. And of course, if this is sticking out too much, you can always adjust these things, try to bring it in a little bit more. Um, just whatever works for you, like whatever item you're using, you can just bring it in and try to make that overlap a little less noticeable, you know, depending on how close the camera is to it. Uh, as you can see, like when you're back out a little ways, you can't even really tell that there's much else there besides the item. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's a basic, uh, you know, way that you can get an enchanted look on an item. It doesn't have the the texture swooshing that happens in Minecraft where you have like this little sheen kind of coming across it. But as far as like the quickest and easiest way to, uh, to achieve uh, an enchanted item effect in Minimator, this was the most uh, intuitive and easy way that I uh, could think of to do so. As you can see here, I have a sword that I went ahead and tried the effect with, and it seems to work pretty well for uh, most objects. Now, the, the one thing is about these objects is the less circular they are. Like, this works really well on the apple, except for the stem because of its kind of circular nature. But on a sword, you're obviously dealing with a much differently shaped object, and... You get some of these edges here that don't want to cooperate because things don't scale exactly the way you would like them to, but you can kind of finesse it and uh, fine tune it to work pretty well, well enough, uh, you know, for a basic animation. And you can see here just with animating that, that's kind of an exaggerated uh, coloring and whatnot, but just trying to give you guys an example here. All right, guys, that's going to do it. That's about it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, that's just the most basic and easy way that I discovered to do enchanted items within my animator. Stay tuned, hopefully at a later date when I can come up with something a little more advanced and a little more true to the, the Minecraft look. But for now, that's how you can do it for your animations. All right, so thanks for joining me, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets. Mostly your pets. And I will see you in the next video.